Today, I received the most ridiculous box I have ever seen in my life. It would have made a refrigerator delivery look like Amazon Prime. I've had bicycle deliveries before. I've shipped them, received them, and even unboxed fat tire bikes. They're all shipped in similar sized boxes. If it wasn't for this tear in the side, I would have expected a horse to jump out of this one. Wait, is this a couch? No! No way! It can't be! They shipped the bike with the front wheel on! It's quick release! Why not just take it off and use a normal bike box? This is the Freeway Buffalo. It's an e-bike. I couldn't say no to a free e-bike to play around on, so we're gonna have some fun with this thing for sure. It's not a high-end e-bike like the Specialized Turbo Levo. But it only costs 1700 bucks, whereas the Turbo Levo costs as much as a car. Although it's marketed as a mountain bike, I put it in the commuter category. It's got a big cushy seat, a really long stem, and those antler things on the handlebars. I'm not obligated to give you guys anything but the truth, so let's put this thing together and take an objective look at it. First, let's cruise on over to Freeway's website. Wow, first of all, the video is great. The guy is riding in a pack of roadies and everyone is drafting him. Then he downshifts and BAM! He's shredding through Montana, wheeling over rocks and splashing through streams. It's worth mentioning that they used Maxxis tires in the video, while the bike actually comes with Kenda. Riding the freeway buffalo on the road, you will also be a visual beast in others eyes. I bet. And these girls are freaking out too. Amazing! Have a good cycling trip! Be careful, have a fun. And this guy's like, yeah, I'll have fun if I feel like it. Jokes aside, the photos and video are actually really good. They did put some effort into the site, so I'm surprised they didn't get an English speaking person to do the verbiage. Back to the bike. I've gotta be honest, it doesn't look half bad. The battery fits into the down tube, which is way better than those crazy brackets you see on cheap e-bikes. The welds are also smoothed over, like an old aluminum Cannondale. The drivetrain is a mix of parts, with Shimano Altus in the rear. Altus is a mountain bike group set, but on the very low end. The wiring could be better, but I think I'm going to make some adjustments to that myself. It's also worth noting that the motor is in the rear hub, just like a basic commuter e-bike. This will affect the way it feels, as bottom bracket motors give a more seamless pedal assist experience. To me, anything that gets cars off the road is a good thing, so let's take it for a ride. So I haven't put in an electric mode yet, but I can say for one that this is definitely not very well suited for off-road because of the front suspension. They do absorb shock, but they're very loud and somewhat... I don't know. This bike is also huge, but I'm a particularly small person, so I would just put that down to sizing. Holy crap is this thing heavy. Seemed to handle that okay. Okay, now that I'm out on some city streets, let me put this thing into electric mode. Okay. I guess that's high speed, that's middle speed, that's low speed, and then I don't know what that is, maybe that's turbo. I'm gonna start on the low speed. Yeah, I don't feel it doing anything, although I did go off like a three foot drop with it. So let's put it, let's turn it up. Oh, now I feel it doing something. 
Okay, there's a pretty good amount of wind here and it's very easy for me to pedal along here. It says I'm doing 27 kilometers an hour, which is really not that fast. Without much more energy or maybe the same amount of energy, I could hold faster than this on my road bike. There's also a fair bit of noise coming from the bottom bracket. Whoa, on the hills? On the hills, you can really feel it. I mean, I'm in a really high gear and this thing is just kind of flying up the hill, no problem. I'm gonna downshift a little bit. Wow. Okay, so hills are where this thing's gonna make the biggest difference. And I think during a commute, you know, where you're trying to stay dry and trying not to sweat because you're gonna work in an office, I think hills are where you're really gonna get killed. And this definitely does that. Hold on to the antlers here, not so bad. It is super, super windy out, and I'm holding, you know, a decent pace without that much effort. But if I were on a road bike and I were putting an effort, I could go a lot faster than this. About to blow this guy away. I'm starting to get a better feel for how the motor engages, and I don't feel so terrible about it anymore. I mean, I'm really able to cruise. Like I said, it tops out. Tops out around 30 kilometers an hour, which I'll do the conversion for later. So you're not gonna win any races on this thing, but it is definitely helping. What's the fee for bikes? $2. You get three back. Thank you. Enjoy your ride. I don't know if you guys can hear the clicking. As soon as I stop pedaling, it stops. You hear? There's a clicking sound in the bottom bracket. And I didn't assemble the bottom bracket, so I know I know what you're gonna say. I jumped off a three-foot ledge, but it was clicking like that when I left the house. Probably maybe clicking a little worse now, but hey, what are you gonna do? They showed the guy shredding through Montana. Figure it can handle a little drop. Do a little bit of XC. Holy crap, this is not a mountain bike. All right, so I definitely dropped the chain on that one before, so let's put it back on. Upshift a little bit, and let's blast through these ruts. Okay, that was a little big. Dropped another chain. Uh. Uh. Let me put a hand on a brake while I'm doing this to make sure the motor is disengaged because I know the brakes are wired to the motor to keep it from engaging. So let's see here. Uh. All right. You know what's funny is I have this in a really low gear right now and all I have to do is kind of kick the cranks forwards and the motor goes. So right now this is full electric dirt bike mode because I'm not doing any work. Because I'm not doing any work. Let's hit these roots over here. Definitely doesn't have the kind of dampening and stuff that real mountain bike suspension does. Oh, it freaks me out how the motor just engages here. All right, let's see if we can do this. Oh! Ooh. <laughs> uh. Is it trail worthy? Maybe it is. Maybe it is trail worthy. I think I would stick to a normal mountain bike, but can it handle some off-road? Definitely. It's noisy, it's bumpy, not particularly enjoyable to ride. But yes, oh shit, I just got covered in I just got covered in mud. 
Alright, I believe this is under my own power. Holy sh**! Ah! Oh, that was like muddy, smelly water. Definitely easy to just fly across this grass right now. Coming up on your right. <laughs> All right, so remember before how this thing was just kind of going when I was pedaling in the low gear? I'm gonna try that right here on this bridge and see if it has the power to get me all the way up the bridge. So this is just nonsense pedaling right now. It's pushing me up the bridge at 22 kilometers per hour. I really gotta figure out how to change that to miles per hour. So it's worth noting, I have mixed feelings about e-mountain bikes in the first place. Um, they're not a category that I'm particularly interested in. But this video is not about bashing e-bikes or bashing e-mountain bikes. For somebody who is interested in them, I'm supposed to give you my opinion on this. As an e-mountain bike, I'm gonna say that this is probably not a very good bike to get. It doesn't seem like it was designed by people who have a good understanding of mountain bikes. The geometry is all wrong. The tires are seriously inadequate for mountain biking. The front suspension is just terrible. I mean, it's basically what you would find on a Walmart bike. I would say the only thing that makes this worthy of mountain biking is the build. It is sturdy. There's no way that you could say this thing isn't sturdy. Now, in terms of commuting, I would say there are some merits to this bike. If you see e-bikes, usually they're super nerdy, super dorky. There's huge batteries hanging off of them. Um, I mean, they just look like a complete mess. This thing is way, way more streamlined. The battery's built into the down tube. Um, it's got hydraulic disc brakes, which is nice. Thing, It does stop really good. I mean, everything's kind of integrated. It's got a lock for the battery. It's kind of nice as a commuter e-bike. I would definitely give it that. I think they had an Indiegogo on this thing for $1,000, and I would say for $1,000, maybe it would be worth it, but $1,700, I don't know. They have e-bike conversion kits, so you could get yourself a decent mountain bike or decent commuter bike, maybe spend like $600 on a conversion kit, and you know, for around 1000 you could have an e-bike. Is it gonna be this integrated? Is it gonna be this user-friendly? I don't know about that, but is it more powerful? Is it more capable? I don't think so. All right, so side note, side note. Maybe I'm a little jaded because I am a cyclist. I mountain bike, I road bike, I BMX. I mean, I'm into bikes. Now, somebody like my mom, I've gone bike riding with my mom before, just in short spurts. Holding 15 miles an hour would be like a dream to my mom. That's not something that she would be able to do without a lot of training. And I've kind of missed out on being able to do things like take a bike ride around the city with my mom. She can't go much faster than four miles an hour. You know, with this thing being able to pretty easily hold about 15 miles an hour, it might be kind of a good bike to, to lend to somebody like her. That's something that I could actually appreciate about it. I also have a friend with terrible knee problems who hasn't been on a bike in years. When he visits, we'll be able to go to the beach or downtown without fighting traffic in a car. I'm looking forward to that. Is it worth $1,700? I'll let you be the judge. I don't have a lot of experience with commuter e-bikes, so I don't know how it compares. I do know that most of the e-bike conversions I've seen look like science experiments. The Buffalo could pass for a normal bike and look a little more accessible to a first-time e-bike user. So although I'm not planning on riding this, I'm planning on using it. So I'll keep it around for a while and let you guys know what I think long term. Thanks for riding with me today and I'll see you next time. This is easily the most epic unboxing ever. I mean, the entire bike, they didn't even take the bike apart. They could have fit it in like a, a box half the size if they would have just taken off the front wheel. This is awesome. <laughs>